Hey everyone, Andrew here. Over the years that I've been working with Laravel, I've picked up a few tips and tricks that really help speed up or simplify some eloquent queries that I use on a regular basis. In this video, I'm going to show you five of these along with method examples and the expected data returned. To start off with, I have this demo Laravel app that I've put together. It's an incredibly simple property management system currently just containing the models and migrations for the data. There's properties, tenants, requests, and technicians. I've added relationships to the models as well, tying in each tenant to a property and requests and technicians together in a many-to-many -many relationship. I've also seeded this database with a good amount of each model, and we can see it populated here. All right, let's get into it. For each of these tips, I'm going to create a new specific route for them. So let's open up our routes web file and add in our first one. route get tip1 and that calls the tip controller1 method let's create that tip controller now and open it up adding in our one method For now, let's just return all of the properties. We can open up our browser and navigate to tip1 to see the data returned in the expected JSON format. Just a heads up, throughout this tutorial this is what we'll be seeing, raw data coming through as JSON with our modified eloquent queries filtering and manipulating this data into a new result. Okay, so what if we want to filter out these properties by say, a max rent price, and whether or not they allow pets? In our method, we can determine if that request query is available using the request get rent and then return those properties whose rent is less than the provided amount. We can also add another conditional checking for the pets query. and return properties based on the value of pets underscore allowed. Of course, we'll have to add in another conditional to check for both of those properties and return properties based off of both of those values. However, there's a much better way of dealing with these conditionals that doesn't require a separate query for each check. It will also handle multiple possible combinations. This is our first tip. Let's start off by creating a properties variable, and that holds a property query. This is essentially a placeholder initialization of an eloquent query object. It'll allow us to chain methods onto it to determine the final results that we want. So in that case, we can run conditionals on each of the request queries that we're expecting, and if they're present, we can filter the properties by chaining a where method onto our properties query. Then, we can use a single return properties get. This will actually fire off the eloquent database request to fetch our properties with any conditionals that we've chained on. If we go back to our browser and navigate to the tip1 route, we can see all of our properties present. There's no request variables, so none of the conditionals are being chained onto our database query. If we add rent1200, now we're getting back properties whose rent is at or below $1,200. Almost forgot to fix this column name for the pets conditional. There we go. And if we chain on pets equals true, 
Now we're getting properties whose rent is at or below $1,200 and that also allow pets. So that's how you build up and run a query conditionally. On to our second tip. Let's add in a new route called tip2 and create our method in our tip controller. This one is going to deal with relationships in our property model, namely tenants. We can return back all of our properties with the attached tenants objects. And then open up our browser and navigate to the new tip2 route to see the results. We can see each of the properties and under a tenants attribute, an array of the attached tenant models. Now in some of these properties, we have multiple tenants. What if we wanted to only show one tenant instead, the one whose lease is expiring the furthest away from today? We could use with as an array, using tenants as the key and a closure function as the value. We could manipulate the query to order by the lease expires at date and limit the results to one. Checking this out in the browser, and it's not exactly working right. So apparently this limit is the problem, and it doesn't return what's expected. No worries though, this is where our second tip comes into play. In the property model, let's add a new method called newest tenant. Tenants is a one-to-many relationship. And in Laravel, you can actually use has one on the same relationship to only return one of those attached models. So we have a has one tenant and we'll order by the lease expires at date to get the latest one. Now, if we return to our tip controller and modify our return to use with newest tenant, we can go back to the browser and see that we're getting back a single newest underscore tenant item. We can also include all of our property's tenants in this as well. All right, let's get the third tip up and ready with a new route and controller method. Let's say that I wanted to return all of the properties whose tenants didn't have cats or dogs. To get this, we'd use with as an array, tenants with a closure, and calling query where has underscore cats is false and has underscore dogs is false. Okay, well, that partially works. We are returning all of the tenants without cats or dogs, but we're also still returning the properties that now don't have any tenants associated with them. We could just filter out these by determining if that array is empty or not, but there's a better way with Eloquent, and that's our third tip. Instead of our current query, we're going to use property where has. This takes a column or attribute, in our case, tenants, and then can also take a closure argument to run a nested query. We'll use the same query that we did earlier, where has underscore cats is false, and has underscore dogs is false. Then we specify that we also want to attach our tenants to the properties, and get the results. What this does is hide any property models that don't have tenants matching the closure query. Refreshing and perfect. We are only seeing properties that have at least one tenant that doesn't have cats or dogs.
We can go back to our controller and modify the with call so that we're also only seeing the tenants that don't have cats or dogs, instead of all tenants. Okay, that's better. Not only are properties hidden that include tenants with pets, but we're also only seeing tenants without dogs or cats on the return properties. Time for our fourth tip. Let's initialize that with a new route and controller method. For this one, let's start off by returning all of our technician models in the database. Heading over to the tip 4 route in the browser, we can see the JSON return for those models. And we can modify that call to include attached requests, which are attached to the technician models through a many-to-many -many relationship and a pivot table. Since these technicians have a varying amount of attached requests, it would be nice to easily display how many of a related model there are inside of our technician model. In our controller, we honestly could just run a for each loop on the return technicians, grab a count of the attached requests, and then attach this request count to the original technicians array. This is a little messy though, and can get complicated if we start implementing something like pagination. Instead, we can take care of this with our fourth tip, using dynamically generated attributes in our models. In our technician model, let's create a new method called getRequestsCountAttribute. The naming convention for attribute methods in Larva models are camel case. Start with get, then the name of the attribute you want to generate, followed by attribute. So this method here will generate a requests underscore count column on the return technician object. And now we can return whatever we'd like for this value. In our case, we want to get a count of the attached requests, so we can return this, requests, count. If we refresh our browser, we're not seeing that attribute. Well, that's because it's not automatically returned out of the box. We can call it on the front end as technician requests underscore count, but if we want it returned in the raw JSON, we'll have to make a small change. Let's head back to our technician model, and at the top, Add in a protected appends array, with our attribute name as the only value. Now, if we refresh our browser one more time, we can see that value automatically injected back into our returned technician's JSON. The best part is that we can actually sort by this generated column. Using sort by requests underscore count after our get call, we'll order the technicians by the amount of requests assigned to them. It might not look like it here, but that's because of my Chrome extension that prettifies JSON. I'll open up Postman real quick and run a get on the tip4 route. And you can see the array displaying in the appropriately sorted order, from the least request count to the most. Okay, last tip, tip5. Adding a new route and controller method, let's finish this up. For this one, we'll return all of our tenant models. Navigating to tip 5 in the browser, we can see those tenants returned back to us. These all have a lease expires at column, so what if we wanted to only return those that are expiring in a particular month? Back on our tip controller, we can filter out by using where, lease expires at, like, and something like 2021-07-%. Which should get us just those whose lease is expiring in July of 2021. Refreshing our browser, and yep, it looks like those are the only ones being returned. However, I'm not super partial to using like statements with Eloquent, especially when it comes to dates. 
Luckily, there's this incredibly succinct method that's a better alternative, and it's our fifth and final tip. We can replace where with where month. Specify the lease expires at column, and the month that we're filtering by, in this case, July. There's also a where year method that we can chain on this to narrow down by both the month and the year, specifying the same column in 2021. Refreshing the browser, we can see the expected data is being pulled in. The best part about these methods is that we can replace these hard-coded values with something like query variables from the request. Usually, I'd validate these to make sure they're appropriate for this application, but since this is just a simple demo, I'm just going to dump these right into the method. Now if we go back to our browser, we can specify a month. And a year. And see results filtering based on those two combined values. And that's all for now. You've seen five separate tips that can simplify and strengthen your Laravel Eloquent queries without having to make a lot of changes to your existing code base. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other web development topics, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments or on my Twitter linked below. Huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors and everyone else who continues to support these videos. Thanks for watching.